Okay, in this presentation, we are going to look at Bayes' risk. Now, there's a lot going on here, so what I'm going to do is introduce things bit by bit. But just to remark that, essentially, the Bayes' risk is some sort of a cost function, essentially. And it is, it's essentially what we have down here is some table, okay? And we have a decision, H0, H1, decide H0, decide H1 if h0 is true or if h1 is true so essentially we've got the probability of each outcome and the cost of each outcome okay and essentially the cost is a discrete random variable which is the expected value of each of these outcomes here so it's the sort of so it's very straightforward uh, the expected value of a discrete random variable so cost times the joint probability okay so the threshold value yeah, i'm just going to call it threshold for the likelihood ratio test can be computed as follows. Now this is a bit to remember, okay? So the threshold equals uh, C10 minus C00 over PH0 divided by C01 minus C11 given uh, times probability of H1. Okay, now that is um, not, you, in case you're given it or not given it, uh, the, just actually just a remark that uh, it's one then followed by loads of zeros as in the subscripts and zeros followed by a load of ones in the subscripts okay it's sort of easy to remember really okay so what we're going to do is use this to calculate this threshold so essentially you should be given some costs okay and some probabilities of h0 and h1 okay and essentially what we do is compute some value uh, the threshold and then what we do is we have a likelihood ratio that we compare to this threshold okay so sorry there's a couple of things actually you might sort of want to follow up on uh, beforehand likelihood ratio test and uh, our likelihood test and maximum a priori test okay this is decision theory type stuff okay so let's actually get into a sort of real example here okay so consider a binary decision problem with the following conditional PDFs. Okay, this is the type of thing you'll sort of be expected to start off with. Uh, the conditional PDF of x given h0 equals a half times e to the uh, absolute value of x. And the conditional probability of x given h1 equals a half times e to the minus 2 times the absolute value of x. Okay. Uh, you will actually encounter a lot of these uh, in, uh, in, um, uh, absolute value functions that you'd be expected to integrate. So it actually be sort of a good idea to actually just investigate how to uh, integrate functions like this. Okay. Now the Bayes costs are given as follows. Okay, c zero zero, c zero one, c one zero, c one one. So this is the cost of um, choosing zero when the, the correct uh, h0 when the correct answer was h1 and this is the cost of choosing h1 when the correct answer was zero okay now just normally what happens here is it sort of quite often the cost of a correct decision will be zero okay so uh, determine the Bayes test if the probability of h0 is equal to th two-thirds and compute the associated Bayes risk so the first thing we will do is compute the likelihood ratio. So lambda x is the ratio of the two conditional probability functions. Okay, just actually as a remark, h1 usually goes on top. In a lot of these, uh, it's, the h1 sort of favor is usually favored on top. Just actually, if you're trying to memorize formula, that that helps. Okay, so. We have e to the minus 2 uh, absolute value of x over half of e to the minus absolute value of x. Now, just as a remark, e to the 2k is ek squared. So this is actually, uh, this value here is the square of this value here, okay? So essentially what we can do is simplify it a great deal, okay? So let's put that back into shot. Essentially what we have here is just when we simplify it, we get the absolute value is e to the 2 2 times e to the minus cap, uh, absolute value of x, okay? So if the um, absolute, if the lambda function is greater than uh, the threshold, we decide h1, and if it's less than the threshold, we decide h0, okay? And that is the uh, threshold function there, which we'll just uh, compute now, okay? 
So C01 minus C11 times the probability of H1. And again, it starts with a zero, but the most of the uh, the ones sort of are favored in the uh, numerator. Just remember that. So we get two thirds over two thirds, which is equal to one. Okay. So this is actually how the uh, the, the test actually was is starting to break down. It actually works. Sorry, move the page there. Essentially, what we have here is this fun expression here. What we want to do is essentially simplify it. Okay. So we can actually re-express that as divide both sides by a half. Okay. So we have e to the minus uh, absolute value of x uh, compared to one half. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is going to push this on a little bit further. And what we can do is get the, sorry, just move my page down there. Get the logarithm of both sides and then negate. Okay. Now, uh, just actually watch out that I am going to get the absolute value of this, uh, which actually would resolve into uh, minus absolute value of x. Okay, the, uh, the logarithm of this is just a half. Okay, so we actually, this should, would end up, when you calculate this out, this is minus absolute value of x compared to the log of one half. Now this is important here. Careful, the operator switches, switches directions when we change the sign. So if it h if it's greater than the threshold, it's h1. Now it switches around. Okay, if it's less than the threshold, it's h1. So this is very important. It's very hard to pick up. It could be very very hard to pick up that the this decision operator can change direction, and it does change direction here because we change the signs. Okay, so. The absolute value of x compared to minus log of uh, a half, cal calculate that out, the absolute value of x compared to 0.693. So 0.693 is our threshold, and that uh, those are our decision regions. Okay. Now, what I want to do actually is, I think what I might do is actually break this, uh, stop this video here and uh, just keep going with the next part in a while, because it's just a long video.